Part 8, Treating Thought Conditions. On the preceding sections of this book we have presented for your consideration the facts concerning the general principles involved in the several phases of the phenomena of thought power. These principles have been presented to you with an entire absence of insistence upon the acceptance of any speculative theories concerning the ultimate nature of thought, or mind. We have sought to emphasize the scientific how? rather than the metaphysical why our concern has been almost entirely with the statement of how it works the laws and principles governing its activity. Hoping that we have succeeded in presenting to you the principles and laws of these activities in such a way that you have grasped them, and have committed to memory their essential points, we shall now proceed to the task of instructing you concerning the most practical and scientific methods and ways of applying these principles in your own particular case so that you may avail yourself of the benefit of the right use of this wonderful force of nature, and, at the same time, may avoid the mistake of allowing its negative phases to affect you and to work to your disadvantage. It is quite true that in our general presentation of the principles and laws of thought power, in the preceding sections of this book, we have added here and there a word of caution or of advice concerning the use and application of the power in question, so that you would have a general knowledge of this phase of the subject even if nothing more were said concerning these particular points. But in order that you may apply more effectively these principles you will do well to consider carefully the special statements concerning such application which we are now about to present to you. More than all, however, it is important that you proceed actually to apply these principles in your everyday life. There is no better way of learning a thing than by actually doing it providing that you proceed according to competent instruction concerning the general principles and laws governing the subject in question. Creating a thought -a atmosphere. As you have been informed in previous sections of this book, every person is surrounded by a thought -a or, -a, or thought -a atmosphere composed of thought of vibrations radiating from his thoughts and mental states these thought of vibrations tending to affect and influence other persons with whom such person comes in contact. The thought -a aura or thought -a atmosphere of a person, as you have seen, represents the general mental state of that person his habitual mental states. It is a reflection of his mental character. It may be regarded as a practical extension of his personality. We have shown you that the thought of vibrations composing the thought of atmosphere of a person tend to arouse in other persons a similar rate of vibration. The degree of such induced vibration, however, depends upon the degree of harmony between the mental characters of the other persons and that of the person sending forth the influence there must be something in the nature of the other person before it can be called forth by inductive action the seed must be there, else there will be no sprouting, blossoming, or fruit bearing. There must be something to catch fire, before the fire of mental contagion will spread. We have described this to you before so there is no necessity of repeating the explanation at length in this place. There is another phase of the matter, however, which has not as yet been called to your attention. Here it is in a few words, your general mental character, customary mental state, and habitual mental attitude will be recognized, consciously or subconsciously, by some of the persons with whom you come in contact, by means of your thought -a atmosphere or thought -a aura, even when, by reason of their own differing character, you fail to induce a similar feeling in themselves. They will often be able to catch your vibrations, even though these fail to induce a similar rate of vibration in themselves. You have often sensed the vibrations of sincerity, earnestness, honesty, enthusiasm, reliability, in the thought atmosphere of other persons. You have felt to a certainty that such mental qualities were theirs. In the same way, you have felt distinctly and clearly the vibrations of deceit, unreliability dishonesty, lack of confidence, in the thought -a atmospheres of others coming into your presence. Perhaps you have never thought that other persons could sense your own mental character in the same way but they can, in many cases. This being so it behooves you to build up for yourself a thought -a atmosphere which will be of service to you, and which will affect and influence other persons in a way advantageous to your interests and welfare. If it is possible for other persons to catch your thought -a vibrations, and thus to read your thoughts, it certainly will be well for you to generate thoughts and to emit vibrations of only the right kind the kind likely to influence those other persons in your favor, rather than against you. This, of course, will necessitate something like character building on your part, but in a way rather the reverse of that usually followed. The usual way is to build up your character, 
and to let that affect your thoughts, in this no way, you build up your thoughts, and let these react upon and influence your character so that the latter is reconstructed. However, we shall not here go into details concerning the subject of character building, as that special subject is considered in detail in another book of this series. While the change in your thoughts will greatly influence your character, we shall content ourselves here with considering the thoughts alone your thoughts as they are concerned in producing an effect upon the persons with whom you come in contact. If you wish other persons to feel that you have confidence in yourself, or in your business proposition, your political views, your religious teachings, your general opinions, you must first feel that confidence yourself must feel it so strongly and positively that you will fairly radiate it and cause your thought atmosphere to vibrate it vigorously. If you manage to do this, you may rest assured that the other persons will sense that positive confidence, and will be more or less influenced by it. If you fail to do this, and, instead, allow your mind and thought atmosphere to be filled with the vibrations of lack of confidence, distrust, unbelief, unfaith, doubt, you may be assured that the other persons will catch those vibrations, and thus will be influenced against you this, very often, without conscious recognition on their part of the reason for their feeling and impression. If you feel that your thought atmosphere is not just what it should be that it is too negative, or else lacking in some of the positive characteristics which you consider desirable then you should proceed to create a new thought atmosphere one containing a greater degree of positivity and composed of those qualities which you instinctively realize should be present and active in it. If you desire a thought atmosphere similar to that possessed by individuals who are able to produce upon other persons the impressions they wish to be produced, you have but to start the work of pouring into your aura or thought atmosphere just those thought of vibrations which such fortunate individuals seem to radiate. If you would be like those persons in this respect, you must begin to think as they do. It is all a matter of a given cause producing a given effect. If you wish to produce the effect, you must supply the cause. In short, if you would create a new thought atmosphere for yourself, you must start and to treat your mental atmosphere for the desired qualities. Now, a word here regarding this specialized use of the words, treat, treatment, etc which are frequently met with in all instruction along the lines of mental science and similar subjects, and which we shall employ frequently in the following pages of this book. The word, treat, as so employed, means to supply the needed thought elements, ideas, mental pictures, etc., to the mind, to the thought atmosphere of persons and places or to any other aggregation of thought of vibrations. A treatment of this kind is simply the act or process employed in this matter of treating a person, a place, a thing, for the purpose just named. The process of treatment just described may be illustrated by the familiar act of turning on the light in a hitherto dark room of opening the shutters and admitting the inflow of the rays of sunshine to a dark place of letting a stream of pure, dear water flow into a bowl of dirty water. The light, the sunshine, or the clear water represent the positive elements of thought, while the darkness of the room, or the dirtiness of the water in the bowl, represent the negative elements of thought. The positive elements of thought will always displace and neutralize the negative elements, provided that the positive elements are supplied in sufficient quantity and in the right way. We ask you to consider carefully the statement just made and to commit it to memory if you do this you will have always at your command a most powerful and valuable instrument capable of performing the most important work for you when most needed. Now, from what we have just told you, what would you think should constitute the right method and way of treating your thought atmosphere so as to create in it the qualities and powers which you wish it to possess? You will have no trouble in answering this question, if you have taken heed of what we have just said. You will answer at once. I should begin to pour into my thought atmosphere a sufficient quantity of the thoughts which represent the desired qualities. Your answer is the right one the one that follows logically from the given premises. You must open the windows of your mind to the inflow of positive, powerful thoughts, ideas and mental pictures you must flood the dark places with the sunshine of positive thought. Before proceeding further, however, we must call your attention to a most important fact of psychology which has a direct hearing on this matter of thought treatments of all kinds. Here it is, 
The power of the inflowing positive thoughts is immensely increased by your act of mentally picturing the inflow of the thought of vibrations into that which is being treated by you. The more clearly and strongly that you are able to picture in your imagination the process of the inflow of the positive thought, and the effect of these on the thought atmosphere of that which you are treating, the greater will be the power and efficiency of that inflowing current. Please note the above statement carefully and commit it to memory. Practice until you can clearly imagine and mentally picture the presence of your thought atmosphere, the inflow of the positive current, and the changed condition which is occurring by reason of the treatment. The more real this picture seems to you, the greater the effect will be produced. This is a fact, as you may demonstrate to your own satisfaction there is no need of entering into a technical discussion of the principle involved it works. And that is the main thing. Akin to this is the fact that the more clearly you can picture the mental quality or state which you are pouring into your thought atmosphere by means of the stream or current of thought of vibrations, the greater power will it have to overcome and neutralize those negative qualities and states of which you wish to be rid. In order to create a mental picture of this kind, you must 1. Know the name best expressing and indicating that quality. 2. Be able to recall instances in which that quality was manifested by others, so that you are quite familiar with its outward expressions and, 3. Imagine yourself as possessed of and as manifesting that quality, yourself, even if you have never had this actual experience, so that you may clearly and vividly feel yourself now experiencing its inner phases. By so doing, you will have, a. The verbal symbol of the quality, b. The idea of its outer expression and, c, the feeling of the inner experience which accompanies the latter. When you have acquired this, you have the matter in your own hands, and under your own control. The foregoing two paragraphs contain important truths. Study them well, and commit to memory their essential points. The psychology involved is simple, but its effect is far-reaching and effective. When you know what you want, you have taken the first step toward its attainment. You must know its name and its meaning you must know how other persons act when they possess it how it manifests in outward form you must know how it feels to possess and to manifest it how it exists in its inner form. Ask yourself, what is the name of this quality what are its characteristics what does it mean when fully understood? A good dictionary will give you the answer, then ask yourself, how do persons act when they possess and manifest this quality what are its outward forms of expression? This question may be answered from your observation of other persons, select and study some good human pattern. Finally ask yourself, how does it feel to experience the possession and manifestation of this quality what are the inner forms of its possession? Your imagination, working up the material of your observations of your human patterns, will be able to supply you with this feeling. When you are able to answer these questions, you will be able to proceed effectively with your work of treating your thought atmosphere. We suggest that you now proceed to practice this method upon some particular mental quality the quality of current for instance. Exert your thought, your memory, and your imagination, upon the ideal of courage, according to the rules given above. Having reached the point just mentioned, you may start in earnest to treat your thought atmosphere for desired qualities and powers. The process is simple, turn on the stream of fresh, clear water admit the sunshine to the room that is all there is to it. Treat yourself whenever you have the opportunity, and without neglecting your duties or business you will find plenty of time and opportunities. You will notice the improvement from the very first but do not get discouraged if at the start there occurs a little unpleasant stirring up that is merely natural law readjustment stir up conditions at first. Stick to it persevere do not allow yourself to be sidetracked. Just one word of caution here, never allow yourself to dwell on, picture, or imagine the negative mental state which you wish to neutralize or eradicate. Forget the negatives so far as is possible you need not think of them the sunshine takes care of the darkness you do not have to shovel up the ladder. Cultivate the good plants, and the weeds will be choked out this is the rule of the garden of the mind, at least. Treating places and things. The general principles and rules relating to the treating of your own thought atmosphere, which we have just stated to you, apply also to the case of treating places things, and general conditions arising from thought radioactivity. The thought atmospheres of places, the thought influences of things, the thought conditions in general, which arise from the past or previous presence of thought of vibrations, may be successfully treated by you, 
and their undesirable conditions removed and replaced by desirable conditions, by an application of the very same principles which we have just described and explained to you in connection with treating your own thought atmosphere. There probably will be needed certain minor modifications of the application of the principles, so as to make them fit the particular conditions of the cases before you but the general principles remain the same and the essential elements of the method of application will hold good in all cases. If you rent an office, a house, a store, a room, you will do well to treat its thought atmosphere this, particularly if the former tenants have been of an undesirable character, if the history of the place is bad, or if you sense the presence of thought of vibrations of an undesirable character. In fact, it is a good plan to treat any new building or rooms rented or bought by you and which you intend to occupy. Even if there be present no particularly undesirable thought influences, or past record to be overcome, the treatment will serve to bring about speedily that harmony of thought atmosphere and thought of vibrations which it is always well for one to secure and to maintain in the places occupied by him. You know how foreign and alien to you have been the new quarters occupied by you in the past, in many cases and you remember how in time, after you have occupied the quarters for a while, they grew to feel natural and harmonious to you. By proper treatment you may secure this same agreeable harmony even from almost the very first. Places with evil records and histories places noted for the non-success of the former occupants places in which mental or emotional inharmony or strife have been habitually manifested and places in which for any reason whatsoever the thought atmosphere has become undesirable and calculated to induce unfavorable impressions upon the minds of those occupying them or those visiting them all such places should be subjected to a careful and thorough mental disinfection, renovation, and general treatment. The same is true, though in a less degree, concerning articles of furniture, tools, machinery, clothing, pictures, or any other form of personal property which has come into your possession after having been frequently used by some former owner. Second-hand things often carry with them the thought of influences of former owners, and for that reason are instinctively avoided by many persons but a thorough mental treatment will remove all such objectionable influences, and will saturate the things with your own thought of vibrations. In these treatments of places and things, you must follow the general rules already given. You must mentally picture the inflow of your positive thought occurrence into the thought atmosphere of the place or thing you must vividly realize and picture to yourself the nature of the thought qualities which you are pouring into them. The more clearly that you can visualize or picture that which is being performed on the plane of the thought of vibrations, and the more thoroughly you realize the nature and character of the particular thought qualities being imparted by you, the more complete will be your work of treating and the more satisfactory will be the result. The thought of qualities to be imparted to a place or thing must be those particular qualities which you perceive to be needed, and which, when present, will bring about the results and effects which you desire in connection with that place or thing. A general treatment for a condition of general harmony with my ideals also is to be advised in cases of this kind.